Everybody has that one moment, that one experience that stands out amongst all the absolutely amazing things you experience in the Holy Land. For me, it would have to be the Rock of Agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. Like others, I had an image in my head of what it looked like from all the paintings I'd seen, but it wasn't like any of them. As with so many other Holy Land sites, there's a beautiful Catholic church at the Garden of Gethsemane, and the altar of this Church of All Nations sits right behind the actual rock, which is actually pretty big and flat. And we celebrated Mass literally kneeling next to it. It was crazy. I received the Holy Eucharist and then knelt in prayer with my hand on the very rock where Christ began His Passion. I will never forget it for as long as I live. And while that was a highlight, those kind of moments seem to happen around every corner when you're in the Holy Land. After all, you're walking in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. You're breathing the scented air He breathed and moving through the mysteries of His incredible life. Everyone says it's life-changing, and it is. There is simply nothing like experiencing the exotic beauty and rich vitality of the Holy Land. After all, this is where it all began. It's the epicenter of our faith. So much of the story of the human family revolves around Jerusalem and the surrounding area. It's the palette upon which is painted the story of our salvation. And I'd like to invite you to journey there with me on a five-star pilgrimage from April 7th to the 16th, 2024. We're going to travel through Israel in the footsteps of our Lord, visiting the major holy sites in Jerusalem like the Mount of Olives, the Potter Noster Shrine, where Jesus taught the disciples the Lord's Prayer, and the Garden of Gethsemane, where you too can experience Mass at the Rock of Agony, like I have. We'll pray at the Western Wall, the last remnant of the Jerusalem Temple destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD, and the Upper Room on Mount Zion, where Jesus and the disciples celebrated the Last Supper. Of course, Mary is a huge part of the story too, so we'll visit the Benedictine Church of the Dormition, where tradition tells us Our Lady fell asleep before being assumed body and soul into heaven. In addition to all the amazing sights in Jerusalem, our itinerary includes Bethlehem, where we'll celebrate Mass in the Grotto of the Nativity, the Jordan River, where Christ was baptized, Caesarea, Nazareth, and Cana, site of the most famous wedding in history and Christ's first miracle. We'll stay in Tiberias, take a boat onto the Sea of Galilee, have Mass at the site of the Transfiguration on Mount Tabor, where Christ ever so slightly pulled back the veil of heaven and dazzled the disciples with His divinity. We'll see the Dead Sea Scrolls at Qumran, Tagba, where Christ fed the 5,000, and have the opportunity to float on the Dead Sea, the lowest and saltiest place on earth. Of course, no tour of the Holy Land would be complete without treading the way of the cross, the Via Dolorosa. After praying and meditating on the Stations of the Cross as we move through the Old City, we'll arrive at the most holy site of all, Calvary, the site of the crucifixion. You can literally reach down and touch the rock where Christ's cross was mounted and see where the ground was split in two when He gave up His Spirit. Following the path of our Lord, we'll continue a few more steps to His tomb before celebrating our glorious salvation and the sacrifice of the Mass at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, where you can enter the very tomb of Christ and touch where He laid for three days. Does it get any better? And I didn't even get to everything. The Pool of Bethesda, the home of Mary's parents, Joachim and Anne, the Mount of Beatitudes, where Christ gave the Sermon on the Mount. It's all there. Simply put, this trip is the Bible come alive. You know, over the course of centuries, tens of millions of people have made this trip. Some literally risked life and limb to get to the Holy Land. Why? They did it for love, the love of Jesus Christ. They wanted to more fully experience His world. Can you imagine celebrating the sacrifice of the Mass where it all began? And we listen to the Gospel and the liturgy, but in the Holy Land, it transforms from words on a page to words in your heart. Trust me. The readings at Mass will never sound the same after you're immersed in the exotic and mysterious world where Christ was born, died, and rose to new life. There is simply no experience that can compare to the Holy Land. And while it's a pilgrimage, we're going to experience it all quite comfortably. Our home base for the first three days is a beautiful new hotel on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. It's an exquisitely peaceful location right on the shore where you can gaze out on the very water upon which Jesus walked. 
and Peter didn't. Then we'll head south into Jerusalem and check into a five-star luxury hotel for the final five days. My friends at 206 Tours and I have worked out a fabulous itinerary that includes not only beautiful accommodations in the heart of Jerusalem, but excellent cuisine and the very best guides. Of course, we'll have our very own priests celebrating private masses at amazing holy sites. And to augment the spiritual dimension of the trip, I'll be giving talks designed to help us integrate all we're experiencing into our interior lives. Because that's what it's all about. What we experience on pilgrimage is meant to transform our lives and make us more like Christ. And there's no more powerful way to make that happen than by experiencing His world firsthand. So join me for a pilgrimage unlike any other through the Holy Land. Call 206 Tours and ask about Matthew Leonard's trip to the Holy Land or go to MatthewSLeonard.com for more information. I look forward to experiencing the life-changing world of our Lord with you and other Catholic brothers and sisters from around the world. None of us will ever be the same. God bless you.